So a pretty straightforward uh, application of dot product is calculating the distance between a line in three dimensions and a random spot that's nearby. So I want to just work through the construction of this before we actually do any calculations so you can sort of get the idea of what we're after. So first off, there's some point and I've named it M. So that's here. And then I have a line going through space like so. And that's this line here. Now the distance I want to get is how far I am from here to here. What is that distance? So there's a few little facts that you need to be able to, to figure out here. Um, the first is that the shortest distance is going to be at a 90 degree angle with this vector or with this line. So if you think about that, if the only way to make this not 90 is to have it swing either this way or that way. And as I swing, the length here of this hypotenuse is, is getting longer. So at the shortest distance, let me write that in, at the closest approach, the closest distance, um, this vector here, which I'm going to call D, D for distance, D is perpendicular to the line. Now you just did um, a whole bunch of examples where you forced a vector to be perpendicular um, by changing one coordinate. Um, so we're going to use uh, that fact here to try and force this vector to be perpendicular to the line. So in order to do that, I have to look at the equation of this thing and decide which of these pieces is causing the line to travel in that direction. And that's this piece here. So at the closest distance, this vector is perpendicular to, you can scratch the line and put in two, one, negative three. Because that is the direction that the, the line is traveling in. So how am I going to use these facts in order to get this vector? Uh, so the trick is to start with a random place on this line. I'm going to start with, let's say, right here. And I'm trying to get to there. So that's, that's this line drawn from some other place that is not the shortest spot. I'm going to construct this using a vector from here to there. Now, we did that in the very first chunk of this independent study. I think it was part two, where the, the uh, vector from one place to another is where you start. So that's somewhere on the line. Subtract where you end up. So if I can put this equation in here and then subtract the coordinates of m, I'm going to have an equation for this particular uh, vector. And then if I can say that the dot product between that equation and this direction vector, or the direction vector of this line, and set it to zero so it's perpendicular, then I can choose the coordinates of p, right? I'll be able to calculate the p value that gets me to exactly that spot. That's the idea. So I'm going to start from the top and I'm going to try and work through this numerically so that we can see how this works. So as I just mentioned a minute ago, I'm going to define the uh, vector connecting this dot to this line uh, as going from, from here to here. So D will be the coordinates of the line. So that's 7, 2, negative 3. 
plus p two one negative three subtract the coordinates of m. All right. So if I write that out then, I have seven minus three, which is four, plus two p's. And I have two minus negative one, that's three, plus a p. And I have negative three minus five, which is negative eight, minus three p's. All right, so there we go. What I've got here is if you pick a value for p, right, like that's a location on the line. If I pick any location, right, let's say p is 2. Well, if I put a 2 here, here, and here, then this would be the vector that gets me from that spot to point m. If I made it 5, put a 5 here, here, and here, that gets me from that spot to point m. So this little vector here is, is from any place. Maybe I should draw it rather than just use my fingers and making lobster lobster claws. So if P is 2, so say you're here when P is 2, then, then that's what D is giving you. Say if P equals 5 would be here, then that's what D is giving you. And if P is 10, then that's what it's giving you. They're all pointing towards M. So the idea here is that looking at this diagram, and which is not necessarily to scale, there's some value between here and here where that vector would be perpendicular to the line. So I'm going to try and find that place by using the fact that if two vectors dot product is zero, then they must be perpendicular. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dot product D with the direction vector of the line. So if I do that, I will have 4 plus 2p, comma, 3 plus 1p, comma, negative 8 minus 3p, dotted with the piece of this line that actually makes it travel that way. And that's, that's this chunk. This is the one that has a p attached to it. It's the one determining how many steps you've gone. So dot with 2, 1, negative 3. So dot product is you take your x's, multiply your x's, y times your y, z times your z, and you just add them all up. So 2 times 4 plus 2p plus 1 times 3 plus 1p plus negative 3 times negative 8, negative 3p. I'm going to have to do ex some expanding into the brackets. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4p. Plus 3. Plus 1p. Minus 3 times negative 8 would be positive 24. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9p. And if I look, I have a bunch of things with a p attached and a bunch of things that do not. So 8 and 3 is 11, 11 and 24 is 35, and 4 plus 1 would be 5, 5 plus 9 would be 14 p's. So I took two things that were vectors, did the dot product, and I ended up with something that's a scalar, which is kind of handy, especially when I use the fact that this is supposed to be perpendicular to that at the closest approach. 
So you dot product D with the direction vector of the line and set it to zero. To force perpendicular lines. So this thing then would be equal to zero, which means this would be equal to zero, which means this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. And what I have there is an equation that's going to let me calculate the step of P I need in order to get to that, that closest approach. So to do that, I'm going to kick the 35 over, divide by 14. Now those both divide by, by 7. That ends up being negative 5 over 2. All right, so when P is negative 2.5, now I know that doesn't work on my scale, but I end up with D pointing this way and making a 90 degree corner. All right. So now that I've got that, I can go back to my vector d here. I know the parameter of p that makes it the shortest possible distance. So I'm going to take this p value and I'm going to put it here, here, and here. I'm just going to erase some stuff um, so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take this fraction, I'm going to put it in here, and here, and here. So d is 4 plus 2 times negative 5 halves, comma 3 plus 1 times negative 5 halves, comma negative 8 minus 3 times negative 5 halves. Mm, I have enough brackets there, one more. So d will be 2 times negative 5 halves is negative 5. 1 times negative 5 halves is negative 5 halves. Negative 3 times negative 5 halves would be 15 halves. All right. So first one's easy. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. This would be... Mm. 6 halves minus 5 halves leaves me with 1 half. And this would be 16 halves. Minus 16 plus 15 would be negative 1 half. So at closest approach, when P is negative 5 halves, this vector connecting the line and the dot has these coordinates. So that's the instructions. That's how I get from the line 2m at the shortest uh, approach. I want the distance from there. All I need then is the magnitude of this vector, and that would tell me how far I have to travel. So the magnitude of d is the square root of negative 1 squared plus 1 half squared plus negative 1 half squared. is 1 plus a quarter plus 1 quarter. 4, that's 6 quarters. <coughs> square root of 6 quarters, which is the same as the square root of 6 over 2. So there you have it. We started off by drawing the line in, in general and picking a random point on it. We use that random point to construct this, a generic vector, right? You tell me p, the, the coordinate P and I will tell you where you are on the line. Then you use that to connect to this M. You pick a P and I will use this thing to tell you how to get from that place on the line to this spot you've labeled M. Then I did their dot product and set it equal to zero to help narrow all those pathways down to the one that met the line at a 90 degree angle. Once I had that p value in, I get the actual vector 
connecting the line to the dot at its, at its point of closest approach and then secured the magnitude of that vector to tell me how far the dot is from the line. So we can say then, after all that work, that this point M, 3, negative 1, 5, is root 6 over 2 away from this line. And if you'd like in decimals, uh, root 6, 6 is like 2.7 or something. 2.449 divided by 2 is about 1.22 units. All right. So that was a lot of work, um, but if you think about what you've done there, um, this line, this is totally imaginary, right? Like it's a completely abstract idea, uh, a pathway connecting two random points in space and I introduce a random third line. And I didn't have to get out a measuring tape. I didn't have to get out a protractor. I didn't have to get out any, any measuring tools at all. If I could define this line algebraically, as, as I have, and I can define the coordinates of that point, then I can calculate the distance of minimum approach. And that's far more useful in engineering and physics applications than having to actually build this thing and get out my tape measure um, to try and figure out what it is. So if you can appreciate how like how powerful this is in in determining distances, which then will be used to determine forces, which will then be used to determine energies required, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all because you modeled it with mathematics instead of having to build the thing physically.